Hi guys and uh, welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be testing noise on the HDLRC F4 Flame. So this is going to be fun. So uh, what I forgot to mention in the previous uh, review was that it actually does not have a 12 volt regulator and that it's taking the, the VTX is taking power directly from the battery terminals. So we're going to be testing these terminals here and we're going to also be recording the FPV footage and, I, and I've put up the most the noisiest setup I have, which is a Racer Star 35 amp MS series ESC with the Emacs 2205S uh, motor. That's 2300 kV. So that is the noisiest setup I have, and I've been testing, and that's the noisiest I could find. Now I've built this custom PDB here, uh, PCB. Sorry, uh, this will go to the camera, and it'll go to the VTX, and then I could just have it. Uh, it's completely selectable with uh, jumpers. Uh, if there's OSD, if there's no OSD, we could run it, and just all kinds of crazy stuff. We could bypass the the uh, voltage step down regulator here. I could insert um, capacitors here if we needed to. So it's just a complete setup that makes it easy of use, and it's very reliable. Now, what we're going to be is actually we're going to be listening on the VTX uh, output. Uh, on the oscilloscope and we're going to be listening directly coming out from the ESC which will be on one of these pads right here. This is another one I have right now. This is going to be going on the build. Uh, I'll show you what I did over there on the bench right now. So let's just take a look. Alright, so here we're going to be using the Foxier XAT camera with a Yashin TX526 receiver. It's going to be connected to the custom PCB that I showed you and here we have the wires that are going to be connecting directly to the to the PCB where this stuff connects to, with the FPV gear connects to. I put, we're gonna stick the battery through here and it's gonna feed it to the ESC up on the bench and the bench is gonna be controlling the ESC's signal. So right now we're actually powering it off of the flight controller and we can check the amp draw and everything. All right, so before I begin, I'm just gonna let you know how the layout on the screen is gonna be. The top line is the is channel two on my oscilloscope, which is measuring the raw VTX output, which is the positive and negative on these terminals right here. And the yellow line, the one on the bottom, is measuring the ESC pads, uh, just the, the current that's coming back and the noise that's coming from here, and how much it, we can see how much it's actually, some, whatever's going on in here, and how much it's filtering it out. So that's what we're gonna be looking at. And we're also going to have the FPV footage so you guys can see the flickers, if there's any blackouts, and all that kinds of good stuff. So let's jump into it. Hey guys, so as you saw right there, there was a lot of OSD flicking, flick, flickering in and out and some noise. Um, overall, the PDB is doing absolutely phenomenal for the VTX port, uh, power port without any regulator. It's just using its own filtering with all these capacitors and I find it it's, it's very good. This is amazing. Now, the problem of the flickers and that some noise, that is from the... OSD chip. Now these OSD chips, uh, they're very old because these are very sensitive to voltage, very. I mean if it drops maybe 0.2 of a volt less than it could take then it just starts going all crazy. So the problem we're seeing is from the some noise hitting this or some voltage drops actually touching the OSD and that is what we're seeing. So what we're going to do now is I'm actually going to add the 470 microfarad 25 volt low ESR capacitor and hopefully that'll clear everything right up. So let's check that out.
All right, guys, so you just saw the low ESR capacitor just did magic. And now this problem is, it will be susceptible to many other uh, boards with the OSD built in. Um, what, what happens is some of the frequencies just jump through the, uh, leak through the five volt regulator and just hop in here and just mess things up kind of. So when we added that low ESR capacitor actually filtered it out. So maybe even just adding one 25 volt uh, low ESR capacitor just to the battery terminals, not even a thousand, just a 470 could clear this problem up. And uh, we will know this once I actually put it on a power hungry build and then I can actually come back and uh, tell you about that if that really did help. So in the beginning, I'm going to actually set it up with no capacitor, but I'm going to leave room for a tiny capacitor, low ESR capacitor to put on these and to see if that'll fix this problem. But overall, it lived to my expectations. And don't, don't forget that I have just set up the noisiest setup I have to run these tests on just, just on a hardcore level. So it lived up to my expectations and I am truly impressed uh, with this board. Now, regarding the VTX, I highly doubt you're gonna get VTX blackouts, and I cannot guarantee uh, that it won't burn your VTX. I'm, I'm fairly certain, but I won't tell you I'm, I guarantee it until I actually try it. So, but I, I'm, let's just say 70%, I'm 70% I'm sure it, it's not gonna burn your VTX anytime soon. Um, now, what else do we have? The 5 volt, the camera was, I also tested it off camera. This one was not recorded. The camera, the 5 volt back was doing absolutely great, except those little leaks, but those were not affecting the camera at all. This is just leaking into this little bad boy right here, the OSD. And overall, it's a very good, clean build. I bored, like I, I really am enjoying this and I'm, it's living up to my expectations and it's just awesome. Um, but you know, there's only so much I could say through this testing. Um, it'll have to wait until we actually build it and set it up on a quad and start flying it. Then I can come back and tell you if it's truly 100%. But as of right now, it's standing up very well. So that's going to conclude it for this video, guys. I really hope it helps someone out there. And, um, I hope you guys enjoyed it. And if you guys have any suggestions, just feel free to let me know and just wait up for my upcoming video we're going to be actually comparing this guy with the dysf4 and the matek uh, i forgot what it's called but it's the matek the new one with the pdb and fc like you could put them together kind of like the dysf4 and their their four and one escs so we're going to be testing these out and then at the end have a final video where we see which one is the best and which one failed in what areas and it'll be just a complete thorough detailed test through the process of all of those and that is it guys so i really hope you guys enjoyed it like i said before and please don't forget to like and subscribe and i will see you next time see you guys